Hey, it's Yay for Yarn, and today I'm going to show you one switch that can help you knit faster. So I'm sure we've all been in this type of situation where you've got a project to finish, it's got a deadline on it, you're on a time crunch, and you're just scrambling to get it done as fast as you possibly can, just wishing that you could knit faster. Well, the key to faster knitting is not just moving your fingers faster. The key is actually moving them more efficiently. So there are several different styles of knitting and they can all be kind of customized to the individual, but every style of knitting is a little different and they all produce the same knitting stitches, but just using different motions to do that. So I initially learned to knit with the English style and the English style is more commonly taught in North America and especially in the, uh, the little teach yourself to knit pamphlets that a lot of self-taught knitters use to learn. And in the English style, the yarn is held and tensioned in the right hand. And there are many different ways that you can tension your yarn in the right hand. It just depends on what you like and what works best for you. So for English style knitting, it, it takes basically three separate motions to make a stitch. So to knit a stitch with the English style, we have to basically work three separate motions to make the stitch. So we have to insert the right needle into the stitch on the left needle that we want to work into. We have to hold the, basically hold both of the needles in the left hand and let go of it let go of the right needle with the right hand to lift the right hand off of the needle and kind of throw the yarn around the tip of the right needle and then use the right needle tip to pull that yarn through the previous stitch to make a new stitch and then slide it off. So this is generally called throwing or English style or American style knitting and there's nothing wrong with this. There are lots of English style knitters that are pretty fast because they've had a lot of practice and their hands can go through these several motions pretty quickly. So I don't have anything against the English style. It is very commonly used and there's nothing wrong with it. Every knitter's preference will be different. So if you like the English style, then that's great. You can use it. There's nothing wrong with that. The most important thing is that you use the knitting style that works for you. However, because the English style takes so many separate motions to make a stitch, like we insert, that's one motion, then we have to let go of the needle and wrap the yarn, that's a second motion, and then we pull it off or pull it through and then slip it off the left needle. That's basically three individual steps or motions that we have to make to create a stitch with the English style. And it just so happens that there are other styles of knitting out there that are more efficient. So before I go ahead and talk about that, I also wanted to show you what it looks like to purl with the English style. And I'm not super good at this. I'm not an English style knitter anymore. I used to be, but I have since switched over to a different style. So my swatch here has four garter stitches or four knit stitches on the wrong side row before purling to the last four stitches. So for English style, every time you want to switch between knitting and purling, for example, I just knit, now I wanna purl, I have to again lift the yarn with my hand off that needle and bring it between the needles to the front. So to purl with the English style, you have to insert it into the stitch as if to purl. Again, lift the entire hand off the right needle and wrap the yarn around the needle, then pull it through. So again, there's nothing wrong with this style. It's very commonly used. A lot of people enjoy it, love it, and that's great. I don't have any problem with that. You need to use whatever style works best for you. And yes, I am a little slower at this naturally just because I don't use it very often. But there are more efficient ways 
to do this. So to make our knitting faster, we want to make the motions of our hand more efficient. And to do this, we want to combine those one, two, three separate motions into one or two fluid motions that kind of all flow together and can be worked smoothly. So I'm just going to, again, bring the yarn to the back and knit those last four stitches. And then we're going to talk about other knitting styles. So one of the other knitting styles, it's actually kind of called several different kinds, you know, several different names. So Portuguese and Peruvian style knitting tensions the yarn in a different way. So even though Portuguese and Peruvian knitters hold the yarn in, you know, tension it in their right hand, the yarn doesn't come from over here. It comes from over here. And that's because they either bring the yarn up to and through a knitting pin, which is worn on the knitter's clothing at the shoulder, or else they bring the yarn up behind the knitter's neck and then back down into the right hand. So the right hand and either the back of the knitter's neck or the pin help add tension to the yarn and then the yarn is picked out from over here. So it's grabbed from right here. And that does make it more efficient because you don't have to move your whole hand to wrap the yarn. You just grab it because it's already right over here. And while a lot of people do use this technique, it's not as common and I generally don't use it super often because even though it is super efficient if you are purling in the round and that's what most people of the cultures that use that technique are usually doing. They usually do like color work, stranded color work in the round from the purl side and I think that that is a great method for that type of knitting and I will absolutely use that for any kind of stranded color work in the round but I don't do a whole lot of stranded color work in the round so I don't tend to use that very often and another thing to take note of is not everybody wants to wear a pin on their clothing and not everybody wants to wrap yarn around the back of their neck so my favorite knitting style is actually continental knitting now this style is a little bit different from both the English style and the Peruvian Portuguese type styles. So for continental knitting, if you've watched me knit in my other videos, this will look a little familiar. For continental knitting, we hold the yarn in the left hand. And so this keeps the yarn, you know, in the same area that we want to grab it with the tip of our needle. So we can just grab that yarn pretty easily with the tip of the needle in one smooth fluid motion. So with the yarn in the left hand, it doesn't take as much motion to get the yarn around the tip of the right needle and then pull the new stitch through. So the right needle just picks the yarn up as it goes back there and we can go pretty fast. Now I am no expert continental knitter, but it's still a whole lot faster for me and more comfortable for me. So that is my style of choice. Now, as with any knitting style, there are many different possible ways that you can tension the yarn on your left hand. Some people like to wrap it around their finger like this and go kind of like that. And that works well for a lot of people. There are also knitters who like to wrap it around the pinky and then up over the index finger like this. And that works fine too. And there are also knitters who like to bring the yarn around the wrist like so. But this is generally recommended for people who knit kind of tight because this will give you a looser gauge. So that particular hold does not work for me. I've also seen it done where you hold it just in your index finger like this and you just kind of curl the index finger around the yarn and while this works just fine this is not my personal preference because 
then my fingers all curled up all the time. And for me, that puts more tension on some of the other muscles in my hand. So I like to keep my hand as relaxed as possible. And I personally don't like the feeling of like having the yarn wrapped around my finger like that. So for me personally, I get the best tension by weaving the yarn under and over my fingers like this so that it comes over the top of my index finger. So however you tension the yarn doesn't really matter as long as it comes over the top of your index finger towards the knitting. So I'm on the purl side again. So I'm going to knit these first four stitches. And I'm going to show you real quick how to purl and then I'll show you how to knit more, you know, in more detail when I get to the next row. But to purl, it's a lot easier to switch back and forth between knitting and purling with the continental style because you're controlling the yarn with your index finger on the left hand. And so it's easier to just move the yarn to the front or move it to the back. Now another thing you want to keep in mind is that this is most efficient if you keep the yarn coming over your index finger kind of closer to the tip. If you have it coming back over here, there's nothing quote wrong with that, but it's more efficient if you have it down closer to the tip of your finger because, you know, when you have everything closer to the tips of the needles and the tips of your fingers, then that makes it easier because you don't have to move so far to get the yarn where you need it to go. So with, when we're purling with continental style, at least the way I like to do it, this is also, I, I should mention this, this is not the typical um, continental purl. There are some continental knitters who purl like this, where they bring the yarn on the index finger forward to make the stitch. So normally a lot of continental knitters would wrap the yarn and then bring the index finger forward and then pull the needle through from front to back. That's not how I like to do it. Um, but let's go back to the beginning here. With the right hand needle, you're just going to keep your right hand on the right hand needle and you want your index finger of the right hand to be just kind of resting on the stitch that was last knit or purled or whatever you did to it. Just the first stitch closest to the tip of that needle, you want your index finger to be resting on it. And with the right hand, you want it tensioned, you want the yarn tensioned in your fingers however is most comfortable and gets the best tension for you. And what we're going to do is bring the yarn to the front and if I just bring it between the two needles, it'll stay on the front. So with the purl, the, the way that I like to do my purls, instead of bringing the yarn forward on my index finger, I like to use my thumb. So right now, the working yarn is in front of that purl stitch. I'm going to insert my right needle behind the working yarn and that first purl stitch. And then I like to bring my thumb up here and just kind of bring the yarn down. And what we're kind of doing is sandwiching it behind the right needle and in front of the left needle. And then I can just pull it through and off in one fluid motion like so. I've also seen some people use the second finger, the middle finger to push that down. That feels a little awkward to me. So I like to use my thumb to just bring it down. So I'm inserting behind the working yarn and into the first stitch as if to purl and then bringing my thumb down like this to make sure that it catches the yarn. Because if you don't, you just insert and then when you pull it back, the yarn doesn't grab because this is not a hooked needle. So if you want, you can bring the uh, yarn forward with your index finger, or you can really change the angle of your needles, but that is also less efficient for me. So I like to use the thumb to kind of bring the yarn down. And even though I am slower at purling, I can still knit significantly faster purling with this method than with any other method that I have tried. I've got a few more knit stitches on this row and I'm gonna show you how I like to work my knit stitches across the knit row. So for knit stitches in the continental method, which is kind of my modified version a little bit, 
mainly because I do uh, I hold my yarn a different way and I purl a little bit differently but what we're gonna do is insert the right needle into that first stitch and then I like to use that middle finger to just kind of flick the yarn back over the top of that needle like so before I pull it under so I'm just kind of using that to gently flick the yarn behind and the more you do this the faster you'll get at it and it becomes more natural and the motions can become even smaller again I'm going to insert into the stitch and I just like to kind of keep my uh, middle finger forward a little bit so that when I insert it's already in position to just kind of lift up a little bit and then that helps the needle grab the yarn and you'll also notice that every time I knit a new stitch I always move my index finger on the right hand up to the next stitch that was just knit and this helps keep the stitches kind of moving along the right needle as they build up on the needle and that also helps them um, not slide off the tips if you're working really close to the tips so I'm going to go ahead and break this whole knit stitch thing down one more time in detail. So I've got my right hand on the right hand needle and I'm keeping my index finger on the stitch that's closest to the tip. And anytime I make a new stitch, I want to move that finger up to the next stitch. And then in my left hand, I have the yarn tension coming over the top of my index finger. And I'm also holding the left needle with my left hand. So to make the knit stitch, I'm going to insert knit wise into the next stitch and then just use that middle finger to flick the yarn. What we're doing is we're kind of flicking it behind so that it's going around the tip of the needle and then we are pulling it through the previous stitch and slipping it off of the left needle. So that is the basic, you know, method I like to use for knit stitches. And I really like this continental method. I think for me, this is what works best for me. Again, you need to do what works best for you, but you might give this a try. If you are, you know, used to using a different style, you might give this a try and see how you like it because, you know, obviously the first time you try it, chances are it won't make you go any faster considering it's the first time and it takes, you know, it takes a little practice for your hands to get used to those specific motions. But once they do, you can kind of fly through your knitting. Once you've found that knitting style that works best for you and the tension that works best for you. And I have found that this, this particular style, this is my own little version of the continental knitting style is very comfortable to work at a pretty quick pace. Now, obviously I'm not the fastest knitter in the world. There are plenty of people out there who knit faster than me. And there are other people who do other styles that can still knit faster than me. And I'm okay with that. But this is the method that I like to use best for my knitting because it's just what works best for me. And if something else works better for you, go for it. But this is just, my way of doing it and if this looks like it might be of help to you then you might want to just give it a try and see if it helps see if it makes your knitting any more comfortable more relaxed faster speedier more efficient and another thing i should mention is that when you are knitting with a more efficient method where that your hands don't have to move as much to produce the same stitches that also can reduce hand strain a little bit because instead of having to move your whole wrist to throw the yarn around the needle, you're just moving your fingertips basically. That's all you're doing. So this is just my favorite way to knit. This is kind of my own little slightly modified version of the Continental Method. I'm sure there are other people who do it the same way and I'm sure there are plenty of other people who do it differently. So like I said, whatever style works best for you is what you need to do so if you tried this and you like it then maybe you'll want to use it sometimes but if you don't like it that's okay you know you need to do whatever is 
most efficient for your hands and your knitting at whatever speed you want to knit. So if you decide you'd like to give this version of the Continental Style a try, be sure to go grab my free printable cheat sheet with a step-by-step -step photo tutorial of each step required to produce the basic knitting stitches in this style. And you will find the link to where you can get that cheat sheet in the description box. And if you do decide to give it a try, I'd love to hear how you like it. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know what's your favorite knitting style in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe, making sure you click the little bell next to the subscribe button to be notified of new videos. Thanks for watching.